Welcome back to the program. We have a very unusual opportunity this evening to welcome to the program the CEO of IREX, the contractor handling the Young African Leaders Initiative with the U.S. government. Mrs. Lord, I want to just thank you for taking out the time from your busy schedule to be with us today. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. You come from humble beginnings. <laughs> uh, and uh, the reason why I, I, I want to just start there is because so many of the young leaders that of tomorrow come from similar beginnings. Um, and I want to just ask you how your early experiences shaped the leader you are today. Well, I think I was fortunate. And I think I had many more opportunities than many of the people who are in this amazing program, these incredible individuals. But I will say that I do have a relatively humble background, but I was given an education. I was exposed to mentors and people who supported me. I had opportunities and I took them. And I think one of the magical elements of this program for me personally is that this is an investment in giving these remarkable people in the, the, the program similar kinds of opportunities. And as I said to you in an earlier conversation, Another distinctive element of the program is that these people are not just in this program to better themselves or their family's position. They really feel deeply a responsibility and a hunger to give back to their communities, to their countries, and to really shape a better future in Africa. So I think any time we can help give people opportunities to give back and serve others more effectively, that's a great investment. You know, one of the very unique features of this program that I think has really stood out amongst those who are close enough to observe the way the program functions is that there's an element of uh, mutual beneficiation where you have these young African leaders coming into the United States not just to learn, but also to present their own ideas and their own initiatives. Can you talk a little bit about how this program has been structured in a way uh, that uh, all parties involved have something to, to glean from the others? Absolutely. So we have a thousand fellows in the United States this summer. They have been at institutes at American universities focused on public management and civic leadership and business and entrepreneurship. And each one of the 38 universities across the country really gives those fellows, the Mandela Washington Fellows, an opportunity to interact with their communities. So whether they are in Kansas or Arizona or New Hampshire, the fellows are out in the communities working with people who are in uh, doing work that's like their work, whether they are doctors uh, serving community needs, whether they are entrepreneurs starting businesses, whether they are advocates for a particular cause like women's empowerment. They're meeting people like them who face similar challenges and they're exchanging ideas about how to best address those challenges. You know, Dr. Lord, this program uh, having started in 2014 when kind of globalization seemed to be moving forward uh, without any impediments. We've seen in recent times uh, around the world forces of isolationism, forces of exceptionalism, forces of protectionism. And one of the questions I want to ask is when you look at the, the medium to long term uh, kind of trajectory of this kind of program, uh, in, in view of some of the forces that have emerged lately, are, are there any concerns that there's a, a lack of regard for uh, global participation in some quarters? I personally have led a life marked by global engagement and I believe in global engagement. But that said, I'm not from Manhattan or Silicon Valley. I'm from a town where people work hard for a living and many people don't have passports or ever leave the country. I deeply understand why people have felt that globalization has not served them. Whether they're Americans or British or Kenyans, I understand where they are coming from. 
I think programs like this can help to be an antidote to that because while I think it's incumbent on us all to make sure that the benefits of globalization are shared more broadly across societies, I think programs like this help to show the possibilities, how interacting across borders, building those personal connections can create more opportunities for people around the world and in, that includes Americans. Um, they will be able to find their lives enriched. They will be able to learn new things they didn't know before. And they may often get very concrete relationships that allow, say, a farmer in Iowa to find a new market for a product somewhere in Africa. You know, it may be a very concrete return on investment like this. So I feel that when people have the opportunity to really form these connections, they can see more clearly how engagement will benefit them. Many young Africans view this program, some in the YALI initiative, some who are not yet a part of the YALI initiative. We are in an age where the chief executive officer of IREX is a woman, and in many of the African countries, some of these opportunities are not available. What would you say to uh, young Africans viewing this program about you know, the challenges they face and about the potentials they have moving into the future. Change is possible. I am the first woman president of IREX, which is an organization, a nonprofit organization with an almost 50 year history. And I see that in Africa, change is also coming and change is coming very, very quickly. And if you meet the women who are the rising leaders participating in this Mandela Washington Fellows Program, it will not take you very long at all to see that if change is not coming, uh, it, it may already be here. And that, you know, I think if young women across Africa just keep driving forward, the future is open to them and I see tremendous opportunities down the road. I don't mean to understate the challenges. There are challenges for women in Africa. There are challenges that remain for women around the world, including in this country. But I really see tremendous change and tremendous potential. And it's women like the participants in this Mandela Washington Fellows Program that will help to drive that change. Dr. Lord, um, I really just want to thank you for the time and really just to congratulate you as well on the terrific achievement of executing this project at the level that IREX has been able to execute it. Thank you so much, it's a privilege. Thank you very much. Sitting down with industrial leaders such as Sir Tony Elumelu and Dr. Kristen Lord brought into clear focus the role persistence and noble tenacity play in transforming a vision into a sustainable reality. With socio-political and institutional bottlenecks still offering resistance to innovative young people in the African context, established leaders remind us of a truth that applies in all sectors, be it private, public, and non-government that opportunity and potential impact to make a difference are greatest where challenges and shortages are many. Ultimately, they affirm that right perspective, persistence, and excellence in execution do very well to overcome any obstacles on the pathway to achievement. Next week on the program, we continue our coverage of the Global Summit of Young African Leaders in Washington, D.C., and we hear directly from several young African leaders driving social, political, and environmental change in their countries and regions. You do not want to miss what these brilliant young leaders have to say. Do join us right here next week. My name is Ajuri Ngilali. Until next time, lead where you are and followers will find you. It's a passion-driven world. 